Hello, everyone. Welcome to Dot to Dot. Today, we're going to talk about one of the greatest landmarks on Oak Island, and that is the stone piles that were discovered by Fred Nolan in the 1960s. So this is a Fred Nolan survey, and you can see here that he has mapped out these stone piles. And we're going to talk about them, talk about uh, how they were uh, interpreted by Fred Nolan and how they really uh, give us information about not only where the opening to the tunnel system is, but also other areas on the island of Nolan's Cross, how it's related to Nolan's Cross, and how it's related to the Zena Halpern map or the Rochefoucauld map. So we're going to start with a little bit of background information. And the first part of this background information comes from uh, Crooker's book, which is called Oak Island Gold. And this is an artifact analysis of the three stone pile, three piles of stone. Now, a lot of maps uh, that have been put out there show just three piles of stones, but it, there's actually five piles of stones and they're big piles of stones. And we're going to find out in just a minute, but Dan Blankenship says there were five piles, not three. And on the survey, you will see that there are five stone piles marked. So if we go down here and we read a little bit about this, it says the three piles of stones, okay, these are talking about the three piles of stones that Captain Allen may have been searching for in the 1880s. Now, I don't know too much about this story. Maybe somebody can comment about it. Form the corners of a triangle in the shape of an arrowhead. They were situated on the top of a hill just outside the eastern boundary of his property. The sides of the triangle were 150 feet long and at the base 100 feet. And I'm going to show you those, those triangle, uh, that dimension right there in a minute. Nolan said that the piles... Uh, one had been destroyed because it was in the middle of a road eventually. But they had diameters of 12 feet and the heights of about 5 feet. And they were considered to be old observation places. The arrow-like formation pointed directly towards the center of the swamp. And when Nolan found these three stone piles, he also found two large ring bolts set in granite boulders. Now I'll show you what those may be too. And that they were on his property. He drew lines through the stone piles and the ring bolts and decided to uh, excavate shafts where the lines intersected, expecting one of the intersection points would mark the location of the treasure. So This is another uh, document that we're going to refer to, and this is uh, uh, credited to Darcy O'Connor. And I'll show you right here. This is where I got this information, and it is a interviews that were done by da Darcy O'Connor in 1976, and they were compiled by uh, David Tobias and Les McPhee, and they're on the website uh, oakislandmystery.com, and I'll leave a link in the description. But uh, this is uh, a section of that, and we're going to be looking at these, at this uh, text here with uh, D.R.C. O'Connor, and look at some of the aspects that he talks about. And we're talking about the stone piles here. Uh, one of the people that also mentioned this is R.V. Harris, who wrote a book on Oak Island. And he mentions in his book, that three stone piles are in a line. And then the other person is uh, Laverne Johnson, who was very much involved in the uh, investigation of the 1937 survey and the stone triangle, which I mentioned in my last video. And these, this, uh, these three stone piles were originally uh part of, of what Fred Nolan thought was the, Savat, uh, the sacking of Havana. And he thought that it was during the year 1762. And he did that 
he he thought that for one reason, and that was because of the magnetic variation. Now, D.R.C. O'Connor gets into a lot of notes here of what he thinks Fred Nolan is saying, and he basically says that Fred Nolan said that the declination for that area was seven degrees. Uh, I don't think Fred Nolan ever thought that the declination was seven degrees. Uh, there's no way that it, it, uh, the Oak Island declination never gets lower than nine degrees. So I don't think he thought that. And another piece of information that comes out of this is this magnetic bearing of 262 and 30 minutes. And Darcy O'Connor gets this wrong because it is not a magnetic bearing. It's actually a true bearing. So all this context of this right here is basically not uh, correct in his evaluation. And perhaps maybe it's because Fred Noland was uh, not being truthful or D'Arcy O'Connor wasn't really understanding what was going on. So we're going to go here to Google Earth. Now here is the Fred Nolan survey, and I have them all, uh, I have this aligned and oriented and scaled. And the way I did this was through Fred Nolan's house. This is the only way that I feel that he did scale, orient, and um, uh register this document is by his house. And if you look at the, I uh, have it set at that. And if you look at the map, you can see it's lined up with his house. So another way I can tell that it's lined up properly is that it is this triangle right here is the one that we spoke of, and it is right here. It is 151 feet this way at the base and 97 feet this way. Now, I know the article said 100 feet at the base, but there's no way that that could be possible, so... Uh, and this is uh, pretty much the three stone piles that were talked about in the article. And this is uh, uh, the lineup. And they're not all perfect, but they are very close to being perfect in alignment. And we have one, two, three, four, five stone piles. And we also probably have one, two granite rocks with ring bolts going through them. Now, this, this alignment here, remember the 262 degrees magnetic? Well, this is right here, 262 degrees and 30 minutes. This is the line that he was referring to in that uh, document. Now, one of the things about this document, too, is that all these vectors point to something that either is related to Nolan's Cross or it's related to the Zena Hopper map, the Rochefoucauld map. Uh, one of them points to cone D. The other points to the set point, which is part of the landing on the Rochefoucauld map. Then there's the north anchor. And then R.V. Harris's, the mention of these three in a line, points down to the 522 entrance where you enter the tunnel. And there's also an alignment from this point to the north anchor. And this uh, rock right here that is measured by Fred Noland that goes to the south anchor. So that's pretty much, uh, oh, and then you also have this line that goes out all the way to the Frog Island landing, 
which we talked about in my last video, which uh, basically comes from the landing on the Rashvakal map and also the uh, stone triangle. So this, uh, this survey has many aspects to it in that one of the reasons Fred Noland, I'm going to take this map off, or let's see. One of the uh, aspects of Fred Nolan that he thought that this was uh, something of relating to 1762, knowing that these, uh, knowing that that declination related to that time of year, was that remember the here's the uh, six two hundred and sixty two degree line. And both of these angles here measure 13 degrees. Now, 13 degrees is the measurement of declination or magnetic variance for that year. And so what he did is, I don't know how he figured it, but he must have thought that this was true north and this was magnetic heading for that year. So what he did is he took a line and he drew it through the uh, this point right here and this point and he came down to here and let me put up the aerial photo and you can see this is where Fred Noland was digging those shafts mentioned in the article. So this is where Fred Noland did his first excavations. Uh, in the swamp, and this was in uh, 1963 and 64. So, with that, he didn't understand one thing, and that was that this uh, these stone piles were actually pointing to different places, and I've already mentioned those, but the alignment of this triangle is due to the east-west line that is developed by this, this stone right here. And it also goes due north to another point, which is uh, derived from the landing through the Zena Hopper map, which is the 429 point which is the uh, distance from here to the headstone is the same as the headstone to cone D, which is one of the alignments in this stone pile goes. So this is, this is basically giving us an alignment from the north anchor to here, and it's also going to cone D, goes to cone A, and it's giving us an alignment of the axis of Nolan's cross. So one of the things that it has in it, if we take a line from this point and we go, uh, let's see, where is it, due west, it hits the cone A. Now, the thing about this right here, let's take this one off, is that these are the two uh, points where the declination or the magnetic variance is calculated through this. And what you do is you measure this angle right there, and it turns out to be 21 degrees right here. This is a 21 degree angle. So this is, this also conforms with um, another document that we saw by uh, Robert Deonson Stevenson or Phil Stevenson presented it where it has a value of minus 21 degrees in the cipher code. 
So this is the magnetic variance, and this is the stones that are on Oak Island, or at least not, not this one, but this one, and these used to be on Oak Island, that measures the variance and gives you the angle of uh, Nolan's Cross. Uh, another thing that was mentioned in the articles was that uh, uh, Laverne Johnson also found a rock down here, and he determined that this right here was running true north and south, which is true. These two are running true north and south. And what he did is he took a line, and this was mentioned by R.V. Harris in his book, and he took a line and took it down to somewhere down here and created a shaft 300 feet north of the money pit. So if we bring up the Restall map and notice Restall, uh, Robert Restall, he puts his north, true north. This is uh, running... Uh, approximately 21 degrees, because this was done in 1963, about the same time uh, Fred Nolan was doing his work with these stone triangles. And this is uh, basically the magnetic uh, heading of that time period. So back to Laverne Johnson. If we go to Laverne Johnson, uh, his, his pit is right here the 1962 pit. Now, it said in the article that Laverne Johnson used the site of this line to and other information to determine this pit. And I think I know what information he used. He came down from these three lines and then he did a he went to the north part of the uh, 1937 survey and went straight north. And I'll pull up that 1937 survey um, information here. Just So what he did is he came down this line. He came to this point right here and went due north. And he went actually a distance that has been mentioned before, which is 14 rods, 231 feet. So this is what Laverne Johnson did. He went down the three points, which are up here, one, two, three, down to the 1937 uh, survey rock station right here and went due north 14 rods to do his uh, pit right here in 1962. So that's what Laverne Johnson did. Uh, this, is, this is something that I'm pretty confident is aligned properly and if it is aligned properly it it does some amazing things oh let me put this 1937 survey back up and take off the rest all map if you notice in the 1937 survey and what this is what i call the um the pickaxe this basically this diamond shaped with the handle that comes through it, the pickaxe, those, uh, these angles that come off of these rock stations go to La Hamp, and it also goes to the set point. Now you remember that there was a line, I think I took it off, there was a line that goes to the set point right here. So this is very integrated, not only into the Rochefoucauld map, but it's also integrated into the 1937 survey and in where these 
these rock formations down here correspond to something that is related to the uh, stone piles up here. Uh, another thing that is interesting is if we put the landing on and the landing is due to the Rochefoucauld map. Let's see, I'll get that. Um, uh, let's see. I have to go into Opon Research. Here is an interesting aspect of that is the set point which is created by the landing is exactly the same as here's the landing angle and in the landing you have uh, an equal distance of 1444 feet from La Hamp to uh, the 429 extension. And when you, you find that the same uh, angle, which is 16 degrees, also corresponds to the stone triangle uh, line right here that comes from the stone triangles and also the line that goes to the set point. So these are related geometrically and they are definitely part of the original uh, landmarks that were put on Oak Island in order to locate the different uh, areas that will be required to enter into the 522 entrance and also to get to the, um, the valve and the hole under the trap door so that you can lower the water level to open the vault. And that is what these landmarks are put on the island for in order to give you a way to survey the South Anchor, which we will talk about in my next video. Cone D, which was the origin point through the landing, the origin point of creating the extension of the 429 extension out to the north anchor and the set point which is used to find the uh, distance from cone E to triangle 2 and also the alignment and the scale that was presented through the landing and uh, it also has to do with locating the 522 entrance. So that was a lot to show you guys. Um, it's been really interesting uh, knowing that this, these things that Fred Nolan discovered in the 1960s had great relevance. And I wish he was here today to see some of this stuff, but uh, he gets a lot of credit uh, for what he discovered and I think he, he's due his credit with this. So thanks for watching and I'll talk to you later.